Satan on bass guitar. Okay, so here's the lesson for the Sioux Falls Wichita alignment solo. I'm actually going to start with Glenn's solo here. It's um, probably more what people really want to see. And I kind of included the first part as a bonus. That is a guitar with an octave doubler, which means whatever I play, the note that comes out of the pedal is one octave lower than what I'm playing. Uh, I'll get to that later. Uh, what's his name? Jeff Dayton's part. We'll, we'll talk about that later. So, um, right into Glenn's part. We're at the seventh position, seventh fret with our first finger. That puts our second finger at eight, the note G. So, I'm going to take this note here. This is G, eighth fret, second string. And start bent. G on the second string, it's already bent. On the third one, I like that. I like that sound. On the third one, it comes down to an unbent G, eight, second string, to seven, F sharp, second string. Move over to the third string, seventh fret, seven to nine. What he's going into is a C major arpeggio. Root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth, root. And he's going to follow that with two notes. So what I did, and what is common for most guitar players to do, you know, I'm, so I'm playing, first I'll show you what the notes are. It's the C arpeggio, like I said. The notes are C, E, G, and I just keep repeating. We have C, eighth fret, sixth string. Two notes on the fifth string. Seven and ten, that gives us E and G. Now, like I said, what most guitar players do, we want ten on the fourth string after that. The next C, the octave of C. So most people will play it. just go over the notes. Second finger on eight on the sixth string. First finger on seven on the fifth string. Pink 
key on 10 mm. on the fifth string. Now, on the fourth string, we also want 10, but it's the third finger. Mm. On the third string, we want nine, mm. second finger. With the first finger, we play both second and first strings at eight. Then we come to 10 on the first string and slide that to 12. So, we hammer, and um, this is the best way I found to do it, is to hammer, I'm going from 10 to 12 on the first string, is to use my second and pinky. I know some people aren't comfortable with the pinky, but if you start using your pinky, it opens you up to a lot more stuff. I highly recommend it. I know people hate it, but really, it like a lick like this. And that's, it really helps. Um, if you try to play that with the first finger, may, or maybe the second finger, it just don't work. It's just too slow. It slows you down. Don't sound right. What this lick is 10 to 12 on the first string. You play 10 again. That's 10, 12, 10, 8 to 7. To 10 on the second string. So like I said, that's a quick hammer, 10 to 12, back to 10. Slide eight to seven. That's with the first finger on the first string. Back to ten on the second string. Now on the first string, seven. Pull off eight to seven. And he hits the open third string before hitting eight on the second string. I don't know if that was an accident or not. These happen to be octaves of each other. The open string is a G. And this note here is a G. I have a feeling it wasn't an accident because we'll see later in the solo and as we saw in Galveston and Gentle on My Mind, um, he loves octaves. I mean, he loves to play octave phrases. So, um, accident or not, it fits perfectly. It's a, it's a two different G's. Here it is, slow down. Let's try to show you what he did here. First string. So he came across the third string to the second string. So after he comes from here and hits that open string two to three, he plays this on the second string, hammer seven to eight, play ten and seven. That's all on the second string. G string is still kind of ringing. And, mm, it was kind of not exact. I, I can't pinpoint exactly when it stops, but it is ringing for a little bit of that phrase. So he's got that. Kind of ends, I guess, where he hits 10 up there. But it's so fast. This is just like really, really detailed. Um, transcription, you don't have to play it like this. So that's seven, hammer to eight, play ten and seven. Then you pull off eight to seven on the second string, and notice I got a little bar going here over strings two and three. Because after that pull off um, on the second string eight to seven, I play seven on the third string twice. That's this note D here, seventh fret, third string. Like the bend we started the solo with, it's the same note. And just like a little crying sound. Eight, seven. So there's only 
one note on the um, third string, the re everything else happens on the sixth string. Third string, second, second. The next thing is this. We saw this in the Gentle On My Mind um, solo. These are octaves, and he likes to take these octaves. And slide them around, move them around. Um, also in the Galveston solo, he did this. Um, so this octave is A. Seventh fret, fourth string, 10th fret. them separately. It hits the fourth string, then the second string. What I'm doing, I'm picking the fourth string with my pick, and I'm hitting the second string with my middle finger. And then I, well, so his thing is kind of like this. So I moved it up to nine and twelve, same strings. And then what he does here, he jumps string. Set, so he's now on three and one. It's the note E, and he brings that back down to seven, but now on different strings. So you get it? It's like A, octaves, B, E. Those are both E, these are octaves, and D. So he kind of lets everything blend together. With the third string, first finger, seventh fret, he doesn't really play the, le the, he doesn't end with that note. He plays strings four, two, four, two, three, one. He lets it slide and he only picks the third string at the end. Four, two, four, two, three, one, three. Right from this note, seventh fret, third string, he does a hammer, seven to nine. Plays seven on the second string. Nine seven, he's coming backwards. What's well, simpler than that? And he hits his high note. Ten on the first string. And he does this vibrato. You can't really do the cross the string vibrato because you're on the first fret and you're out of fretboard. And it's more of a classical, it's more of a shaking it up and down. If you watch the video, you can clearly see he does it that way. When that rings for a while, take your second finger. It's going to be at eight, like I said, position playing. So that's the space right there. And you slide that up two frets and hit it two more times. So watch this. Got that classical vibrato. Slide it up. Hit it twice. Now come to 10 with your third finger. You're going to do a hammer to a, um, 12, 13. That was a hammer pull off combination. So there's one pick. You pick a 12, you hammer up to 13, pull off to 12, pull off to 10. It's harder to say than to play it. Now, the same thing we did before, we slid C to D. But we're in this position. We're going to slide this C to that D. Um, the general rule of thumb, except for strings two and three, is whatever note you want, if you want the same note, just add five on a string behind it. For instance, C, eight, plus five is 13. Uh, it just don't work on the second and third strings. You have to add four. So third string, seven to nine hammer, hit the second string seven and work your way back, third string nine seven. That's 10 on the first string, eight to 10. Put your third finger on 12, do a hammer, pull off combination. In other words, there's only one pick. You pick the note at 12. And then you... picks there. I mean, no one would even notice if you didn't do it, but I, I just kept forgetting to play that. C major arpeggio. 10, 12.
easier to do. There we go. Just pick 12. And that's it. So, um, as soon as I'm done showing you this, I'll show you my octave pedal. Um, let me just turn it on and show you Jeff Dayton's part. So he's playing a true baritone guitar. I, I don't know anything about baritone guitars, but I can tell you that it is not tuned the same way as a guitar because he's playing completely different frets than me. This is the way I worked it out. So that's fifth string three, fourth string three, fourth string five, third string three, twice, then to second fret third string twice, to the fourth string five, slide that up to seven on the fourth string, play five on the third string. Fourth string three to five. Third string three to two. Fourth string three. Fifth string three. Now I change fingering here. It's just like a power chord. You play fourth string three. Then I take this note I'm playing a five. And I slide it up to seven. And I just bring the same finger, the third finger, to four. I'm on the third string. Fourth string five. And I slide that to seven. So five to seven. Four to next string. Five seven. Now I want the same note. But I'm going to put my first finger here to play the next phrase. I hammer 7 to 9. I'm on the 4th string. I play 7 on the 3rd string. I play 9 back on the 4th string. I hammer 7 to 9 on the 4th string. So, if you know your fretboard notes, C, F, G, B flat, A, G, put this on, you get a note, an octave lower. Here it is without it. Okay. So that direct level on the left, that's the amount of actual real guitar sound. If I take that out, we have only octave. I thought it was a little much for this. see the one next to it is the octave level. If I boost that up. So what I like to do for this song, I'm kind of going to mix that. I put the knob back up to 12 o'clock. I'm getting half direct signal, half octave signal. If I take the octave out, I dial it back. Get a little bit of octave in there. It's a pretty good pedal. I uh, highly recommend it. And that's basically it. Um, I'm not going to do a pedal review. I'm just going to show that's how I get the sound now. Um, so, what I did, put the octave here, I 
little bit a little bit more of the octave pedal sound than the um, pure sound. Mm -hmm. 